Insight. I'm AJ Cortese, a Senior Research Associate at Macro Polo, covering technology. In recent years, the global competition for artificial intelligence has been intensifying. Countries, companies, and universities are vying to attract and train the best and brightest talents in artificial intelligence. In particular, China has become a significant player in the producer of top researchers in the field. Recently, we looked at what's going on in the Chinese AI education system and what it can tell us about the country's development for artificial intelligence. Since 2018, the Chinese education system has launched more than 2,300 AI-specific majors, which can tell us a little bit about what the country's direction for AI development is and how the talents are going to be contributing to that vision. So in China, AI education is formatted in different programs, often uh, termed artificial intelligence plus some industry. So for example, AI plus finance, or AI plus robotics, or AI plus biotech. So these types of what we call applied AI areas really show that China is really focusing on trying to integrate artificial intelligence into all different sectors of its economy. In fact, you can even split up these applied AI majors into what we call atoms and bits. Atoms focuses on hardware, whereas bits is more focused on software and digital products. So China's AI education system actually focuses on applied AI in the atoms sector in things like manufacturing, robotics, and construction. But so far in China, AI integration and uptake in the economy has actually focused on bits sectors because they're easier to integrate AI solutions. I'm talking about e-commerce, fintech, cloud computing, and internet companies have really been the first to implement AI. However, China's education system, again, is focusing on these hardware-centric areas like manufacturing. And so there's a bit of an incongruity between what the education system is trying to train talents to do and what industry really needs. So historically, Chinese enterprises have been reluctant to pay for value-added digital solutions. For example, the country's software as a service market is very small compared to its uh, digital economy. So Chinese enterprises, especially in the manufacturing and construction and more uh, hardware real economy centric sectors, have been especially uh, reluctant to pay for these solutions. In fact, partially because they lack the digitization and informatization that internet companies have. So in order to effectively integrate AI solutions, you really need structured, readily available data streams that can power the algorithms uh, that can really make AI improve operations and efficiency. However, in hardware areas, there simply isn't the amount of available data on physical production processes that might be in a manufacturing uh, plant or in a logistics center. There isn't always the same type of data that you might find in sectors like e-commerce or fintech and banking and insurance, where those are really data heavy industries. So this dichotomy means that it's really difficult for these uh, traditional Chinese enterprises to justify shelling out capital intensive um, investments on AI solutions when they don't really see a clear roadmap for implementation and so probably won't be getting the same ROI as say an internet or e-commerce company. Chinese educational institutions are attempting to bridge the gap or the digital divide in AI by training talents to be very familiar with the industrial processes, which would allow them to uh, speed up the pace of informatization and digitization to allow AI to be integrated in these traditional sectors. And so when we see that applied AI focus in Chinese education, that really is meant to train people with both the technical skills and artificial intelligence and the general industry knowledge that they can then combine those two knowledge bases to really effectively integrate AI into the economy. So I think there's many different types of talents that are ultimately going to populate the artificial intelligence ecosystem. And striking the balance between conceptual and applied AI is really important uh, to create a well-rounded industry. So for example, conceptual research and frontier innovation is really important to pushing the field 
um, forward and to realizing innovation. But when it comes to actually applying those innovations into different uh, traditional sectors, that's where applied AI really comes in. And when it comes to China's education system, we've really noted a preference for applied AI. In fact, over the last three years, uh, China has been rolling out a greater proportion of applied AI majors compared to conceptual AI. So I think that while conceptual AI might make your algorithms or your solutions more powerful and more advanced, applied AI is going to allow those solutions to permeate uh, more deeply into different sectors of the economy. And so that's really the difference. And I think that, uh, like we said, we've seen China really opt for applied AI focus in its education. China does lag behind advanced economies and AI integration for some of the reasons that we mentioned before about their lack of willingness to pay for these value-added solutions, the uncertainty about whether such capital-intensive investments will actually pay off. Um, and so in Chinese factories, we do see a lower rate of AI penetration, um, not to mention the lack of data infrastructure needed to effectively integrate AI. So I think for, these are all reasons that China lags behind, but I think if you look again at China's AI education system since 2018, there's really been a prioritization of manufacturing and robotics specifically. So China is the world's factory and it's clear that in their AI education system, they want to train people to upgrade that factory and to make it more sophisticated, which sort of aligns with Beijing's broader economic objectives um, to transition its economy to a more um, advanced manufacturing footing. So I think that's really a challenge for the education system, but it has been recognized, I think, by policy planners in Beijing, and they're trying to make efforts to address that. However, I think that they may be preempting applications because for all the talents that are being trained in manufacturing and robotics, there isn't necessarily lots of AI jobs in manufacturing and robotics because those companies aren't necessarily integrating the solutions yet. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem in terms of how China can effectively increase the penetration of AI in manufacturing and robotics, um, but they're definitely trying to mobilize the education system to that end. Beyond mobilizing China's education system to really embrace AI, um, there's a host of other policies that the government is leveraging to support this industry. Um, AI is very strategically important uh, to Beijing's economic vision, and so to that end, they've been rolling out other initiatives. For example, uh, the government released a set of industry industrial standards uh, for artificial intelligence. Now what that does is it allows the industry to really have a set of standards to look towards which will then filter down into the curriculum of these AI education programs ensuring that students across the hundreds of universities teaching AI are able to uh, learn practical skills that align with the industry standards that they'll then experience in the workforce. And so these are just some of the ways that the government can really lend a helping hand to the alignment between the talent pipeline and the industry needs. To foster a strong AI ecosystem, it really requires capital, uh, policy and institutional support, but most importantly, talent. And we really think that this talent factor is the most determinative influencer of AI progress. While China and the United States are really head and shoulders above a lot of other countries in terms of the AI talents that they produce, uh, that they attract, and the companies that offer the opportunities to these researchers, um, however, there really isn't a clear uh, third place country and that really leaves that position up for grabs. And we've seen many countries uh, throughout the world introducing new policies, a lot of them aimed at facilitating uh, new immigration channels to top artificial intelligence talents. We've seen this in Canada, in the United Kingdom, um, in India and Korea and many other places that are really vying to be artificial intelligence hubs because they see it as vital to their economic dynamism going forward. 